Hey kids, I am so glad that you are back with us here in GFC Kids World because this month we are pumping it up, we are rocking things out, and we are pumped up all about gratitude. You remember what gratitude is, don't you? Well, let's throw it up on the screen for you because we just introduced it to you last week, all right? Here's what gratitude is. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Now, listen, there's so many people who we should thank. I mean, because they help us every day, like family, friends, teachers, coaches, doctors, nurses, ah, the list goes on and on. Maybe even the girl at the fast food window, or perhaps it's the people who make these awesome games for us to play every week. <laughs> Man, who doesn't love a good pumpkin game every now and then, and especially one like that? That was a lot of fun. Well, listen, you know, again, we're still talking about gratitude, and there's so many ways that we should be expressing our gratitude to people. But one of the ways that we can show we're grateful is by worshiping and singing praise. So right now, we want to tell Jesus that we are so grateful for all that he's done for us. And you know what? It is November. It is the month of Thanksgiving. So you know I had to break out this song at some point. This is one of my favorite Thanksgiving songs to get to do with you guys. It's called, I Thank You, Lord. Here we go, sing it out. Thank you. Every time I think 
think of you I get a thankful attitude My heart gets filled with gratitude And Lord, I thank you I thank you, Lord Lord, I thank you I thank you, Lord Lord, I thank you Every time I think of you Get a thankful attitude My heart gets filled with gratitude And Lord, I thank you Lord, you've been so good to me Lord, I thank you You are my help, you meet my need Lord, I thank you You were my strength when I was weak Lord, I thank you Your love and mercy rescued me Thankful attitude, my heart gets filled with gratitude and more. I thank you. Lord, you are my resting place. Lord, I thank you. You saved me by your matchless grace. Great job singing, kids. I know you had to remember the song. I think my favorite part is the little pig playing the guitar. I don't know why. I just like the little guy. Well, listen, right now, we're going to take a moment and go to the Lord in prayer. We want to thank Him for all that He's been doing, not just in our life, but in our church and in our communities. So let's bow our head, close our eyes, and we'll pray together, all right? Lord Jesus, we thank You for the day. We thank You for loving us and, most of all, for saving us. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have right now to hang out with these amazing kids here online today. And I pray, Lord, that you will give me the words that I need that will come across in a way that the kids can understand it. Uh, Lord, the lesson, they don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from you. So, God, I need your words to come through me today so that they can really take this lesson to heart. God, we do ask you to continue to be with Pastor Roy and our leadership team as there's decisions being made every day, multiple times a day, whether it's about our mission's emphasis, whether it's about uh, just some of the general things that we have going on in ministry, or perhaps it's a big financial decision for our 325 project. Whatever it may be, God, would you continue to give them wisdom? And then, Lord, we do ask you to continue to be with our project there at 325. God, I just pray that as bad as we want to be in the building, we want it to be on your timeline. God, we don't want to rush it so much that we maybe overlook things or don't think about things. So give us wisdom as we go through the process. And I pray that everything goes according to your timeline and not ours. So give us patience while we wait. But God, we're excited to get in there and to think about the ministry that will take place, the families that will be coming through those doors, the kids that's going to be hanging out in our new environment where we get to minister to them and introduce them to you and see life change happen in so many different families. We're just excited about it and we can't wait to get there. But today we're here and we want to worship you the best way we can. We want you to know how much we love you and thank you for what you're doing in our lives. So God, we're going to sing one more song and this is just our way of saying thank you and we love you. So we ask all these things in your name today. Amen. Now, kids, this is a new song that we just introduced to you last week. I know you're still learning it, but uh, as you catch on, sing it out with us, okay? Here we go. Every time I'm feeling 
feeling down You pick me up Sing I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you. Great job singing, kids. Now look, I know you've been standing up doing the moves to that song and maybe you were up cheering for the game that we had with all the pumpkins and stuff, but don't settle in too much just yet because today in GFC Kids World, we're going to do a lesson like we have never done before and well, we may not ever do it again. I don't know. Because here's what's going to happen. I'm going to dance with you guys today. We're going to go through some different scenes in our story and we'll talk about some different moves and motions we can make and we'll dance with the music or act it out okay so you can join me if you don't want to join me that's okay you can just sit there and laugh at how crazy pj is on the screen all right so here is the deal today's story starts in second samuel and david is now the king of israel but leading up to this point there had been a lot of fighting a lot of battles and when i think of battles I'm thinking about swords and bow and arrows and slings and fist fights. So cue up the music. Let's act out a battle together. I don't know, you think that's enough fighting for one story? Maybe so. <laughs> 
I told you it was going to be crazy. It was going to be different. It only goes downhill from here, okay? Well, here's the deal. The battles are over. The fighting has slowed down significantly. David is now setting up his kingdom. They're there in Jerusalem. David's kind of assessing everything that's around him, and he realizes something's missing. He was missing the ark. Now, not Noah's ark, not like where all the animals are getting on two by two. We're talking about the ark of the covenant. Now, this was very special. This was a wooden box that had been covered in gold. Inside the box were the tablets of the Ten Commandments. And there were some other artifacts in there as well. But what made this so unique was that wherever the Ark of the Covenant was, you could feel and sense the presence of God being there and people were being blessed because of it. Well, in the battles, the Philistines had captured and taken the Ark of the Covenant. But fortunately, God's people, the Israelites, went and got it and brought it back. And so David is like, okay, I know the ark is somewhere here among our people. We need to get it because I want to bring it back to the center of Jerusalem, right here in the capital city, so that we can all enjoy the presence of God and take time just to sit there and worship Him and enjoy His goodness. Can't you just see them all standing outside, maybe looking towards the Ark of the Covenant, they began to worship. just wanted to worship and celebrate the goodness of God. Well, David heard that the ark was there, and he knew that it was this guy's house named Obed-Edom. And so David wanted to go there. Uh, he, he knew that Obed-Edom had brought it there after it had been captured by the Philistines, and they brought it back. So because the ark was there, here's the thing. Obed-Edom's house, his family, his land, they were all blessed by God. But David wanted to again bring the ark back to Jerusalem, back to the heart of the city. That was the whole plan. I mean, I can see him. He's, he's all excited about this. He had erected this big tent of where it was going to go and set. And then he gathered all of the soldiers together and they began to head out and march towards Obed-Edom so that they could get the ark and bring it back. Can't you hear the soldiers' feet shuffling now? Maybe it was some music that kind of goes like this. exactly how they marched. I don't know how it ended. Again, I told you I'm a little off today, but we're going to have some fun with it. Maybe you at least got to laugh at me on that part. But David and his men had reached the house of Obed-Edom, and they were at his home, and they did. They saw the Ark of the Covenant there, and the men, they lifted up the Ark. Now, they didn't touch it, that because the Ark of the Covenant had these rings on the sides, and so they ran poles through those rings. And the soldiers stood on each end of those poles, and they put the poles on their shoulders, and they lifted it up. They didn't want to touch the Ark of the Covenant. God had told them not to, so they were trying to obey everything that God had told them. And, and here's the thing, after only taking a few steps away from Obed-Edom's house, David was just overcome with joy. He was elated. He was beside himself. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14, it says, He danced in front of the Lord with all of His might. You know what that means exactly. We have got to have a dance party. Are you ready? Hit the music! Now I gotta cut loose, put loose. Okay, 
probably shouldn't have done that one, but too late now. Okay, so David is so excited. He probably had some nicer dance moves than what I had, but he danced the whole way back to Jerusalem because he was so excited about this. Other people joined in with him and they helped David as he was carrying the ark and they blew the trumpets. They celebrated. The whole place was going nuts. And you know what? It might have looked something like this. Don't worry, I'm not going to dance. Watch this. Man, I don't know, that looked like fun to me. I wish I had those kind of moves, but... I imagine it was probably something like that that David looked like going all the way back to the city of Jerusalem. And there, was, there wasn't there was one person who just was not beside themselves happy about the fact that the ark was back there in Jerusalem. All except one person, David's wife. Yeah, she wasn't too happy about his dancing. She told him, you're the king. You're the leader of this nation. You, you're you acting like an idiot out there. Your dance moves aren't all that, David. You're looking kind of crazy. She was not happy about him acting this way. But you know what David did? <laughs> he just kept on enjoying himself. He just kept on dancing. And it may have looked something like this. <laughs> Well, David kept on dancing. He was celebrating. And, and he took the ark all the way back to the tent that he had set up so he could set the ark in its place. He made sacrifices to God. He was giving thanks. He was giving gratitude to God. And then he took and he passed out food to all the people who were there. Bread, raisins, fruits, all kind of stuff. He's passed out to celebrate the fact that the Ark of the Covenant was now back. And eventually, yeah, the dance party ended. A and the people headed back to their homes, and, and David went back to bless his own family and his wife. She was there. Now, I imagine her with her hand on her hip. Maybe her lips were kind of pressed together. Mm-hmm. You just went ahead and acted a fool, didn't you, David? I mean, just something along those lines. And I mean, she was just ready to let him have it. Matter of fact, in 2 Samuel 6, verse 20, she said, you are the king of Israel. You have really brought honor to yourself today, haven't you? You acted like a fool. Well, David told her why he had done it. And he honestly just couldn't help himself. He didn't care if the people thought he looked silly. He wasn't dancing for them anyway. He did it because he was filled with, with the joy of the Lord in his own heart. In verse 21, he said, he, I did it to honor the Lord. And here's what we need to remember from this story today, kids. David only cared about one thing. He wanted to celebrate all that God had done. He was thankful for the way that God had helped his people win all these wars, win all those battles. And by helping them bring this Ark of the Covenant home, to the city of Israel. Now, David's wife, <coughs> she was concerned that the people would think a certain way about David. But for David, it was simple. He was only concerned about God and he wanted to celebrate God and his heart was filled with gratitude and he just did what he felt like come natural. So here's the thing that we can do too, kids. This is our bottom line. We can celebrate 
what God has done. He's done some amazing, unbelievable, miraculous things for His people. And that includes me and you. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 12 through 22. After many years of war and uncertainty, David had finally become the king of Israel. But something was still missing from the royal city of Jerusalem. The ark of the Lord belongs here. The ark was a wooden chest that in some special way carried the presence of God among the Israelites. It had been stolen by the Philistines and then returned, and now it was sitting in the home of a man named Obed-Edom. We'll set up a tent right here for the ark. Let's go get it. David's wife, Michal, was, um, let's just say, less than enthusiastic. The dust on those back roads takes the curl out of my hair. So David gathered up all his best soldiers and marched over to the place where the ark rested. This is a wonderful day, an incredible day, an absolutely fantastic day. With great care, the men lifted the heavy ark with carrying poles. Wonderful, excellent. Let's go. That's one step closer to Jerusalem. Two, three. Are you seriously gonna count the whole way? Wait, stop. We've only come six steps. That's okay. We need to thank God for everything he's done. Right then and there, David sacrificed a bull and a calf to honor God. Okay, now we can move on. One, two, three, lift. Just walking isn't enough. We should dance for God. The ark's kind of heavy. Everyone else, if you're not carrying the ark, celebrate, sing, shout, blow the trumpets. The people shouted and ran alongside the ark. David danced before the Lord all the way to Jerusalem. As the laughing, shouting parade arrived, Michal stared in disbelief from a window. There was her husband, the king, dancing in a simple linen garment with all the common people. Unbelievable. He looks ridiculous. Certainly not like a king. Down on the street, David continued to dance all the way to the beautiful tent he had set up. Everybody behind me, let's dance. Okay, keep on moving. Now, let's switch it up. Time for a breather. Let's put the ark right here. One, two, three, down. David made more sacrifices to honor God. Then he stood before the people. The ark has returned. God bless you. He is the one who rules over us all. He deserves our thanks for everything he's done. So let's keep celebrating. We've got some fresh bread and dates and raisin cakes for everyone. Though all of Jerusalem had turned out for the festivities, one person still refused to celebrate. When David returned home, Michal met him furious. You're the king of Israel, and you've really made yourself look good today, right? Dancing around in that thing? A linen apron. It's what the priests wear. But you're a king. You made a fool of yourself in front of all of your officials and even the servants. I did it to honor God. He made me ruler over his people. I can't even. I will celebrate to honor the Lord. You already said that. Oh, I'm not done. I will bring even less honor to myself if it will bring more honor to God. What is that in your beard? Raisins. <laughs> you want to do the electric slide? No. While Michelle cared more about appearances than anything else, David fixed his gaze on God because he knew nothing was more important than celebrating to thank God for all the amazing things he'd done. You know, God has done some amazing things for his people, especially David. But amazingly, the greatest thing that God was to do was still to come. See, many years after David was alive, when, when God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you and I, that was the greatest thing God could have ever done. And it's important for us to remember 
all the things that God has done for us throughout history and even in our lives today. So just remember, celebrate what God has done. When we think of what God has done, it reminds us of a truth that we mention in here all the time, and that's that we can trust Him no matter what. Think about the times He's protected you. Maybe He's comforted you when you felt sad or helped you make the wise choice. When you think of all He's done for you, I bet you'll feel incredibly grateful and thankful and you might just want to dance. So today, I'm issuing a challenge to every single one of you. This week, let's give some shout outs to different people in our lives that we're thankful for and let us remind them of how God has been good to us. And let's celebrate the things that God's done in our life that he's been so good to us with, okay? So we've got a great memory verse this month. It is Psalm 36, 136 verse 1. And here's what it says. Give thanks to the Lord because he's good. His faithful love endures forever. Psalm 136, 1, nerve. And you know what? God is good. We can remember all the times he's been there for us in the past. And we can celebrate because we know he'll still be with us even in the future. Well, kids, disregard that loud boom. But listen, that's all the time we've got for you today. You know the routine. It's the end of the lesson. So the right hand up in the air. Here we go. High five. I will see you next week.